So welcome to AQA Accounting Teacher. We're going to have a little look at an introduction to incomplete records. So this is a year two topic for A-level studies um, or an AAT level three topic, I believe. Um, so what happens when there is no double entry? So some businesses, believe it or not, do not run a proper double entry bookkeeping system. Instead of that, they rely on just collecting all of their receipts, their invoices, their bank statements, and so on, and scooping it all into a box file at the end of the financial year. That then lands on the accountant's desk, and it's their job to try and make sense of it all. So although you may find it hard to believe, as students of accounting, that people don't keep proper double entry books, um, it does happen, very commonplace in practice. So the information that may be available to the accountant, if you're lucky, the client may have assembled a cash book, it might be a very simple form, but a basic record of their receipts and payments. That might just be a list or it could be um, a spreadsheet. Um, you should have some bank statements, paying in books, check counterfoils and so on. So if all else fails, you can um, work out what's happened on the bank account during the year. We might have copies of invoices that have been received from suppliers. Uh, they may have even kept copies of invoices that they've issued to customers, um, a list of the expenses that they've paid, and records of their assets and liabilities, so both non-current and current. So they should have an idea of what assets they own, um, money that's owed to them, inventory, and so on, but not always. So information that may not be available, incomplete records is a bit like completing a puzzle. It's a bit like doing a jigsaw. You have to kind of put in the bits that you know and then try and find the missing pieces. So things that we might be looking for, we might not know what the capital is at the beginning of the financial year, but we're going to be able to use the accounting equation to work that out. Because if you remember that assets minus liabilities equals capital, if we know what the assets and the liabilities were at the start of the year, we can take one away from the other to find capital. We can work out purchases and sales for the year. So we can use a sales ledger or purchase ledger control account to do that. We can assemble a cash book summary. So quite straightforward, we can draw up a bank account, we can draw up a cash account, and that might help us, particularly if we're looking for something like missing cash, maybe some cash has been stolen. Um, we can work out the profit for the year and we'll see how that can be done quite easily in a moment. So the tools of accounting then, so we've got a little toolbox here. We have got a number of tricks up our sleeves that we can use to find those missing figures. So if we're lucky, we may have an opening trial balance if someone prepared last year's accounts, um, or we may be able to draw up something called a statement of affairs, so a list of the assets and liabilities. We could construct cash and or bank accounts to try and uh, make some sense, find closing balances and so on. We can draw up control accounts. We can do sales ledger control account to find credit sales. We could draw up a purchase ledger control account to find credit purchases. And in addition, the following things may be useful. So as I mentioned before, the accounting equation where assets minus liabilities equals capital. If we know two of the three of those figures, we can work out the third. So generally we'll know assets and liabilities. We just need to take one away from the other and that will tell us how much capital the owner has invested in the business. It might be useful to know about ratios. So gross profit markup and margin could be useful. Inventory turnover, profit in relation to revenue. Now those three we'll be looking at in a further session. We don't cover those in any detail today, but uh, it might be useful to, to memorize those, try and re refresh your memory as to the formulas there. But one really essential skill is knowing inside out the format of the income statement and the statement of financial position, or you may know it as a profit and loss account and a balance sheet. If you don't know what goes where, you haven't got a hope of solving incomplete records. So stop this video here and go right the way back and learn some basic income statement and statement of financial position layouts. Okay, so what we've got here is a, an example, someone called Di Johns. This is a, a question that I've made up. We've got a load of information here for the year ended 31st of December 2017. But there's an awful lot of information we haven't got. So you may notice all we've got here is a list of assets and liabilities. And then we've got a cash book summary of the bank columns. So this gives us details of his bank receipts and his bank payments during the year. So from this, you may be amazed to learn, we are actually gonna draw up a full income statement and statement of financial position. So there's no trial balance, there's no T accounts, this is it. The only T account we have is this cash book summary. So you can see here that he's got assets and liabilities. Um, assets, obviously, if you remember the Deer Clip, if you haven't heard about Deer Clip, you can check out one of my videos for that. Uh, but the premises there, 
the equipment, the inventory, the trade receivable are all assets, trade payables and expenses are liabilities. So that isn't quite a complete list of his assets and liabilities, because if you notice here, he had 2,347 in the bank at the start of the year. This is the bank columns of the cash book. That needs to be included in the list of assets when we're trying to find the, uh, the missing capital figure. Um, and at the end of the year, he had 2,872. So that would need to be included as an asset in that column. So be very careful of this. They often do it in the exam. They give you a cash book summary um, like they've done here, uh, but the bank balance is not included in the list of assets and liabilities. So don't be that student that forgets to include it. OK, so the first thing we can do is to try and find opening capital and we can draw up something called a statement of affairs. What a statement of affairs is, is like a mini statement of financial position or a mini balance sheet. Um, and we can use that to try and work out what the, the capital was at the start of the year. So we need opening capital when a statement of financial position or balance sheet is going to be prepared. Um, and to calculate the capital at the beginning of the year, we're relying on that equation that assets minus liabilities equals capital. OK, so we can draw up the statement of affairs now for Die Johns using the information that was on the previous slide. You may want to go back. In fact, if I just go back now, you may want to, oops, I've gone back too far, actually take a screenshot of this question. Perhaps you can have that on your phone while we're working through the video. And you might like to pause the video at various points and actually have a go at doing some of these activities yourself before I come up with the, uh, the answer. But spoiler alert, here is the statement of affairs. And what I've done here is actually draw up one at the start of the year and at the end of the year. Now we definitely need the one at the start of the year, that 82,150 is gonna be the figure for capital that we use to open our capital account on the statement of financial position. But it's also useful to draw one up, the closing one, because we can actually work out from this and knowing what the drawings were, which is mentioned in the, uh, the cash book summary, we can actually find profit for the year. But just to go back to the statement of affairs, as I said, the idea is that we list the assets, not forgetting any bank and cash balances that may not be in that initial list, take off the liabilities, and one minus the other will give us capital. So we had all these assets here, we're taking off the liabilities to find capital at the start of the year, 82,150, and I'm doing exactly the same at the end of the year, 84156. So actually, if we are asked to do a statement of financial position and we've already done this, then it's going to be a breeze to get that statement of financial position done. So that's the first step, finding opening capital 82150. I'm going to show you now how you can find the profit, as I said, just from this document here, knowing the difference between the two capital balances and knowing what the drawings were for the year. So capital has changed over time. So it started at 82150. It's now gone up to 84,156. The reason for capital changing is because we've added profit and we've taken away drawings. So the change in capital shows the amount of profit or loss after the owner has taken out any drawings. So if we find the increase in capital, which in this case is 2,006 pounds, and then we add back any drawings that have been taken, we've got this figure from the bank summary here, 17,900. So if you look back at the original question, the bank summary showed drawings paid of 17,900. Add those back, take off any capital introduced. We haven't got any in this example, but if we did, that will be deducted and that will give us our profit or loss for the year. So in this instance, we're aiming for a profit of 19,906. So that's not going to be terribly useful as far as you know, information for the owner of the business or HM Revenue and Customs, but it is useful for us as accounting students to have something to come back to. So when we do the income statement, we're aiming to come back to 19,906. One other thing to mention about drawings is it, remember, owners don't always just take drawings as cash or bank balances. Sometimes they might take goods for own use. So if there are any goods for own use mentioned, that needs to be included in the drawings figure. Okay, so that's step two. We've worked out what the profit is that we need to come back to. So we can now prepare the actual income statement, which should show a profit, if we do it right, of 19,906. Now, if we remember the layout of the income statement, the first figure we're gonna be looking for is sales. We need to know what the sales are. Um, and in the bank summary, we weren't actually given a sales figure. We were just told how much had been received from trade receivables which means that our friend Di here has got credit sales. Same for purchases. We haven't been told what purchases are, 
but we can see from the bank that he's made payments to his suppliers. So what we're going to be doing is using a control account to try and work these out. So payments to trade payables is not going to be the same as purchases for the year. We must remember to adjust for the opening and closing balances. And it's the same as um, with receipts for trade receivables. They are not going to be equal to sales for the year. We need to adjust for opening and closing trade receivable balances. OK, so money owed at the start of the year um, and at the end of the year by customers to suppliers. The other thing we need to think about is in addition to the credit sales, we might be told about some cash sales and some cash purchase actions. So use of control accounts. I always highly recommend using control accounts to try and find the missing figure. Um, sometimes students try to just take off or add on opening and closing trade receivables or payables. Whereas if you put it in a control account, if you've got any extra things like irrecoverable debts or discounts that have been allowed, you can factor those in and come up with the right answer. So remember that control accounts only deal with credit purchases and sales. So if we've got cash sales or purchases, they need to be calculated separately and then remember to add the two together. OK, so top tip there. Don't put any cash sales or cash purchases into your control accounts. It's wrong. Right. Purchase ledger control account. Then. So a little reminder here. We have the opening balance on the 1st of January. Dai owed to his suppliers £2,910. And that's the figure that we used in the statement of affairs and that Dai gave to us in his list of opening and closing balances. We've got to add to that the purchases, credit purchases. Now, at the moment, that is a missing figure. We don't know what it is, but we can put in the payments that he's made to his trade payables. He credited a bank account with that. So we need to debit the purchase ledger control account with the 23457. And we also need to have the BAL CD in there. It's what he owed to his suppliers at the end of the year. 2,341. So with the purchase edge control account, if you remember, it's a liability. So the balance brought down is always going to be on the credit side. So if we put in the three figures we do know, then credit purchases has to be the missing one. It's the balancing figure. So credit purchases is going to be 25,798, um, which is the total here, minus the 2,910. Um, and that's going to give us 22,888. That's the missing figure we need to make it balance. We can do the same with sales. We can do a sales ledger control account here. The opening balance comes down on the other side. 1339 was owed by customers to die at the start of the year. It's an asset. Remember, receivables is on the dear side of dear clip. Um, and then the balance carried down is going to be on the opposite side, 1570. We've received from trade receivables. That figure there came out of the bank summary, if you have a look. So that's the money that the trade receivables have paid to die and that he's paid into the bank during the year. So the missing figure over on this side is going to need to be £16,640. You can see that Dai has actually banked £64,534 during the year. So if you have a look at that, we need to remember to add that to the credit sales. So if we were to forget to put Dai's cash sales in, we would probably end up with a gross loss when we start doing the income statement. So a gross loss rather than a gross profit should always ring alarm bells. So watch out for that one. OK, so we've now got credit sales. We've got cash sales because we found those in the cash book summary eventually. And we've also got credit purchases. So we can start putting some final accounts together. So we can uh, start to put the income statement. I should have said spoiler alert here before I got as far as this. But the, um, the top part of the income statement is going to look like this. So the sales revenue, we've got the credit sales plus the cash sales giving us a total of 81 174. We've got opening and closing inventory given to us by Dai and the credit purchases. There were no cash purchases during the year 22888. So cost of sales is the sum of those three, which we deduct from the sales revenue. And that gives us the gross profit of 58098. So we're halfway there on the income statement. We now just need to consider the expenses. So before this can be completed, we need to know what's been paid during the year. So if we look at the bank payments, we can see in the cash book summary that we've paid out £34,561 in expenses. We need to know about any accruals and prepayments. So at the 1st of January, there was an opening accrual, one brought forward from last year, of £145. And at the end of the year, we had a closing accrual 
of 276. So remember that at the end of the year, we add an accrual to what's been paid to come up with the figure. So if you add the closing one, you need to do the opposite with the opening one. So a closing accrual is added to the expenses paid, whereas an opening one is deducted. So with prepayments, if you ever get a prepayment at the end of the year, you deduct it from the amount that's paid to carry it forward into next year. So if you're deducting a closing prepayment, if there's one at the start of the year, you need to add that on. So always do the opposite. So I always say to my students, think about um, what's happening at the end of the year. And if you've got an opening one, do the opposite. So expenses are going to be 34,561 plus the 276 year end accrual minus the opening one. OK, so bank and cash payments plus the accrual at the end of the year, minus the accrual at the start of the year, 34,692 is the total. Now that is not gonna bring us back to the profit figure that we need because we've got depreciation to consider as well. Now we've got a change in the net book value from one year to the next. So what we need to do is add in to the net book value brought forward. So find the net book value at the start of the year, which in this case was 14,000 pounds. It's the figure we used on the statement of affairs, it was included in Dye's list of balances at the very start. And then add any additions to non-current assets. You'll see if you look at the cash book summary that he bought an asset costing four and a half thousand during the year. Now, if we add those two together, we get to eighteen and a half thousand, which is not the same as the net book value at the end of the year, which was fifteen thousand pounds. And that's because Dye has carried out some depreciation on those assets. So depreciation accounts for the three and a half thousand pounds difference. So this little calculation here will prove really useful, not just for incomplete records, but also when you come to try and find missing figures for the statement of cash flow, when you start looking at limited company cash flows. Um, if you remember to start always with the net book value at the beginning of the year and then adjust for anything you know about. So additions, add those in. If you've got a disposal, take off the net book value of the thing that's been sold, subtotal it find the difference and that's going to be your depreciation. Or similarly, they might have told you depreciation, in which case deduct that and your missing figure might be addition. So any difference would be the additions to non-current assets. Or a third scenario might be that you're missing the figure for disposals, but just do the same, throw in everything you know, add additions, deduct dis um, depreciation, um, deduct the net book value at the end of the year and that will give you your net book value of the thing that you've disposed of. So you can then work out the profit or loss on disposal. But that's probably a step too far at the moment. So just remember this one, start with the net book value at the beginning, add any additions, deduct any disposals at net book value, subtotal it, find the net book value at the end of the year, which will have been given to you, and the difference is depreciation. Okay, so we can now record that as an expense on the income statement and we can complete the full income statement for die. So this bit we've already seen, the 58098 is the same gross profit we had earlier. We're deducting 34,692 in expenses and three and a half thousand in depreciation. So the profit for the year, 19,906, which is the figure we originally thought of when we compared the difference in capital and added back drawings. Isn't that clever? Um, the last step to do is the statement of financial position. I'm not going to go through this in any detail. You've got all the balances there. One word of warning, don't change any balances unless you're told that one of them is wrong. So if they give you the figures to produce a statement of affairs like we were given with die, just stick with those figures. Don't try and do any extra depreciation or write any irrecoverable debts off. That will already have been done. So we've now got enough information. So um, as I said, remember to use those figures from the opening and closing statement of affairs. The only figure you need from the opening statement of affairs is opening capital. All the others will come from the closing one. Um, and then you can add the profit from your income statement and deduct drawings, which will be from the bank summary. Um, plus if there are any cash drawings or goods for own use, which there aren't in this question, you'll need to add those in. OK, so should equal the closing capital. So spoiler alert, I'm doing it ahead of time this time. Before I press the button, this is what your statement of financial position should look like. So you've got your non-current assets up there. When you're doing incomplete records, you don't need to bother with the three column approach with assets at cost, provision for depreciation and net book value. We can generally just work with net book value, which makes it a little bit easier. So add those two together, 80,000 in non-current assets. We've got the closing inventory, closing trade receivables, and the closing bank balance. 
and then closing trade payables and that final accrual at the end of the year. So net current assets, the 6773 minus the 2617, 4156, add that on to the non-current assets and that gives us our net assets figure of 84,156. We can then pop the capital account together. We use the statement of affairs to find that opening capital, 82,150. Added the profit for the year, took off the drawings, and uh, there we go, 84,156. The statement of financial position, or balance sheet, balances. Job done. Thanks very much for watching.